welcome back for one more of our episodes journeying to the southwest. Um, this is the final one of the on location episodes for the moment. And today we are at Fort Craig in central New Mexico. Behind us over there is Black Mesa where the Battle of Valverde took place. Fort Craig, of course, is the headquarter of Colonel Cambys' U.S. forces in this region. Behind the camera in the background is where the rebel forces would have come up from the El Paso Mesilla area. And this is the key for Henry Sibley's campaign. The guardhouse, this is today a BLM site. Very little remains, we'll look at it. We'll look at what's here. We'll look at the battle a little bit. Um, we'll look into the visitor center for a minute since they have a very nice model out there of the fort. So how did Fort Craig first come about, first of all? Yes, we have some of the buildings there, officer buildings, and the reconstructed flagpole behind us. When the U.S. forces, when the United States took over this territory from Mexico after the war in 1848, U.S. forces first came to this region and way in the north of here um, established Fort Conrad in 1849. Unfortunately, the decision to quickly establish an outpost was ill-decided and the site suffered from frequent flooding. As a result, construction started down here using adobe bricks, walls to construct Fort Craig. Construction is done in 1853, but unfortunately it is rushed, it is ill done, and the result of that is that very often there's concerns, complaints about the leaking roofs, badly done walls and the like. The fort is relatively small in size as we'll see on the map that I'll put after this clip and also when we go into the visitor center with regard to the model. It's not going to be able to hold the over 3,000 men that can be will accumulate here as the threat of rebel invasion increases in late 1861, early 1862. Most of the forces that will be accumulated here, the New Mexico Volunteers, will actually be in tents on the north side of the fort. But this is an outpost of the U.S. military here, and it is the center of activity. It is the main place between El Paso and Mesilla to the south and Albuquerque to the north. And it is the key that Henry Sibley's forces will have to eliminate if they want to be successful out here. Of course, also very important, the commissary stores over in that direction that they rather would like to take over. It's the commissary stores like this one behind me in the ruins of Fort Craig that made this location such an inviting target 
for Henry Sibley's rebel forces and made this such a crucial location for Cambys' defense of New Mexico. This food, ammunition, material stored here could be the means to win New Mexico for the rebels or on the other hand to oust the invaders. This is what makes Fort Craig important. Camby had to assume that considering Sipley's forces were down in Mesilla on the south, to the south of us, that the assault on Fort Craig would come from that direction. As a result, we have these earthworks from that period still here as a defensive mechanism in case an attack from the south would happen. Of course, what actually will take place is that the rebel forces will advance on the other side of the Rio Grande and start to swing around and it will be to the north of the fort, also on the north side of the fort where most of the New Mexico volunteers are camped, where the battle on the other side of Black Mesa will take place. We're here on the northern edge now of Fort Craig. Black Mesa in the background of me. You would have to imagine a sea of tents housing the four regiments of New Mexico volunteers that were also here at the time of the Battle of Valverde, which takes place on the backside of, uh, of Black Mesa, in this area right next to the fort on the northern side. <clears throat> now, Camby knows that this invasion force is coming his way. And he's going to defend this location as a key entry point into New Mexico. Sibley's forces swing on the other side of the Rio Grande, around behind Black Mesa, and on the other side of the Mesa will take place the Battle of Valverde. We may actually get another view of that battlefield in a little bit later today, I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> but that said, it is not a victory for the U.S. forces. But just as what we saw at Glorieta Pass, where the U.S. forces were unable to score a victory on the battlefield at Glorieta Pass itself, but then you have the destruction of the supply train of the rebel forces, the same takes place here. While the Battle of Alverde is not a success, the U.S. forces are able to destroy the rebel supplies. With that, Sibley is faced with a difficult decision. He can try to besiege the larger U.S. force here at Fort Craig, which is better equipped, better supplied, better fed, with a smaller number of rebel soldiers on the outside, which are lacking supplies, a losing cause. As a result, Sibley decides to leave Canby and his large force here in Fort Craig in his rear and march northward towards Albuquerque and Santa Fe, where he is hoping he will be able to obtain other supplies that the U.S. military has left behind, which of course leads eventually to the Battle of Glorieta Pass and the demise of Sibley's force, Sibley's invasion. Here we have the ruins of Fort Craig behind us. Behind me is the old storehouse and that old open field being the area where the fort was located. We have to imagine the hustle and bustle of activities that took place here in 1862. Well, once the rebel invaders are gone, Fort Craig falls back into this sleepy state. Small U.S. regular garrison that is stationed here. <clears throat> Many of the soldiers that are stationed here will take part in campaigns against Native American tribes eventually, the Naval, as well as the Apache people, trying to remove them from their homelands. By 1870, 
The U.S. military has only two companies of regular force of regular soldiers stationed here. By the end of the wars against Native Americans, by about the 1880s, the fort is abandoned. With that, its decline starts, and what we see here begins. The end of the fort, the ruins of Fort Craig. The U.S. Army sold the fort in 1894 to the Valverde Irrigation Company. Since 1970, it is listed as a National Historic Landmark. The Bureau of Land Management today owns the site and manages this location. But in contrast to Fort Union, where we were earlier this month, Fort Craig is in a lot worse shape. Very little remains, but as we'll see here in a minute, the Bureau of Land Management has done a little bit of reconstruction work to give you a feeling of what happened, what was here. But a lot of it is left to your imagination. What you're seeing there on the top is what is called a Quaker gun. It's not a cannon but it's uh, made to look like one. The so BLM also added in 2014 with modern technology but old uh, maps this wall to the forts, this fortifications to give a better perspective of what happened here. 